Welcome back to The New Norm. I'm Dr. Lou Graham, and this program is brought to you by Midway Dental and Catapult Education. I brought Jeff Horowitz back. We wanted to kind of go throw questions at each other, hot topics. And Jeff, welcome back. And the first topic I want to talk about is safety and hygiene, ultrasonics. Let's talk about what you're doing in your practice. I'll talk about what we're doing in my practice, and we'll see if there's a little bit of crossover. Tell me what you're practicing or what you're doing now in your practice. Well, that sounds great, Lou, because every brain I can pick on this, uh, the better, because I think everybody's really trying to figure this whole thing out, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Listen, yeah. I don't think there's anything that puts off more aerosol than than the use of ultrasonic or, or piezo. So, For sure. You know, when, when we talked about how do we come back safely, we started looking at these extra oral suction units um, that can be adapted for the hygienist. But I also let them know right. until we can get something that can reduce that aerosol, um, it's, it, it's a no-go. You know, we're, we're going back to the basics. We're going to hand scale. Um, and so that's what we've yeah. been doing is we're only allowing hand scaling for profies. But for patients that are needing periodontal therapy, we're putting them on the schedule to come back. And we have a couple of extra oral suction units uh, that are that are coming in. Um, and uh, some of them have become available from from different manufacturers. Um, they're not terribly expensive. And um, so we're looking forward to getting back into ultrasonic scaling, um, having these extra units that the, that the hygienist can use without having to put another dental assistant in there. Right. Well, yes, cost effectiveness of that, without a doubt. Right. What are you doing? Um, yeah, in my, yeah. So in my practice, so what I did was about four or five weeks ago, we ordered the Densply PureVax. It's relatively even a lower cost up front, uh, basically 200 bucks, and it's kind of got a really cool bendable hose. And at the apex of where the high speed suction is, there's a mirror so the hygienist can kind of see what she's doing. And yet the studies show it can suck up 90% of that solution. Now, given that, I have ordered one external suction because I want to see which is better. I don't even know how I'll tell, but I, I want to make sure the hygienist is uber careful. Yeah. One of the things though, Jeff, that we're doing, because I'm a huge perio protect office. So one of the things we're doing for our perio Peroxide, patients, by the way. And especially, <laughs> yeah, ag ag again. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to scan them. We'll just do a digital scan. You can do traditional impression, but we do digital like you do. And we're going to make them wear trays for basically, and it's a new system called IRX from Perio Protect. And they're gonna wear these trays, they get them about two weeks later, they wear the trays twice a day with the 1.74% peroxide. And what uh, Perio Protect has shown is that the tartar comes off so much easier, the, the gingival tissue's already starting to look so much better. So the periodontal therapy should be even less ultrasonic and more comfortable. So I think we're all kind of finding these new safety factors on how to do this as hygiene sets up. So let me I think that's, me ask I think that's brilliant. I mean, it, it just makes all the sense in the well, world just bringing down right. microbes like that. Yep. Right. Right. I didn't bring I didn't develop it. Let me just say <laughs> kudos to Dwayne Keller and Tanya. I did not develop that, but I definitely am going to do it. Um, so let me ask you another question. Masks yep. for hygienists. I feel N95s at this point are what they should be wearing when they're doing ultrasonics. When they're doing, when they will be in your practice, do you feel the same openly or not? 100%. Listen, I'm offering okay. them the same protection that I'm offering to myself yep. and that's being recommended. I think I think that's key that our team needs to know that, that we're yes. trying to protect everyone the same way. And so, yeah, we, we ordered enough that they have one. They know that they need to keep it for the day. Um, I've got shields. I bought shields for every one of them so that they right. can protect those masks. And then again, we have the misting. Um, you know, if they have any concerns, yeah. they can come out, miss the mask as well. And we have no problem with those lasting a full day. So there's, there's no reason not to be supplying your hygienist with uh, N95 yeah. or KN95s. 
Yeah, my, my, my feeling is I'm treating the hygienist just like exactly. myself. Exactly. Any type of aerosol, same exact protection. The only other nuance that we're doing was I ordered these Novaris type air filtration systems that really kill the virus. So I ordered them on a mobile cabinet and it's openly, it's just too expensive to put one in each room. They really yeah. are. So I have my HEPA filters in the hygiene room and in my operatories. And then I'm just gonna wheel these in and basically let them while she's either ultrasonicking or for the 15 minutes before we're gonna turn over the room. That's how we're gonna do it. So it's mobile cart that our floater is just gonna be wheeling these in and out. It's all gonna be kind of constant motion. Um, and that's what we're also doing. Cause again, I think I'm being I want to be, if anything, overprotective than underprotective, and I'm sure you kind of feel yeah, the same way. Yeah, of course. Way. I, I think they're at higher risk than we are. I mean, we've got an assistant pulling most yeah. of the aerosol for us all the time. So, um, yeah, I think we uh, we absolutely owe that to them. But tell me, on these um, on these uh, HEPA units, yeah. do they also use ozone? Do they use anything else um, in the filtration system? So, you know, it's interesting. I would say they're relatively inexpensive. We have ozonators also in our practice. So we have them like kind of in our general weight in our, in our area. I'm, and I personally, it's interesting. You kind of smell when the ozonators on these, you don't smell. So, you know, again, I didn't know any of this right. stuff two and a half months ago. I mean, seriously, this was all voodoo to right. me. So I'm putting these relatively inexpensive systems in to obviously purify the air 24 hours. I've got ozonators on each side of my office and and now I've got the filtration being kind of wheeled in to do its magic turnover of the room. Yeah, so not to not to It's what I do. Yeah, so but and not to challenge because again, we're all novices yeah. when it when it comes I to know. this stuff. So I know. The, you know, my question about HEPA when people started talking about it is is do I ever really want HEPA to be the first thing that filters these these microbes right. because right. You know, at some point you got to change that HEPA filter. So if it's not being ozonated or disinfected before it gets to the HEPA filter, I mean, I don't know. I I, I don't know what the answer is. I, I mean, I I think that there's some microbiologists out there that and virologists that that might understand that better than we do. But you know, I I think it's worth trying everything at this point and erring on the side of safety. Listen, I I couldn't agree more. And I think whatever we're doing right now, I can guarantee you, Jeff, in six months, it will absolutely, there'll be some minor changes in what you and I are both doing. And I think you would agree with yeah, that. Yeah, no question. And, and so on that note, I wanna ask you a question because one of the areas, you've asked me a lot of questions, one of the areas that okay. we have uh, discussed uh, a few times and, and quite openly, you understand a lot more than I do, um, is is testing for our patients. Um, yeah. And and so one of my concerns uh, about uh, COVID testing and, and antibody testing is, you know, we've all heard on the news uh, about issues with sensitivity and specificity of some of these tests, but I know you've looked into it to some degree. And, and I'm curious what you're doing in your office as far as um, having any type of baseline testing or or are you considering putting any type of baseline antibody testing in? So let's go back four weeks, four weeks, five weeks ago. Man, I developed, I have an incredibly detailed screening questionnaire that we go through, uh, we send it out and then we do a teledentistry. I have two team members who do that. And then we go over it the day before they come in because I want to screen everybody. My vision is you got to screen, screen, screen. So now we get to testing. So my thought was if anybody was suspiciously at risk, I would send them for a PCR test. I, I could order the test to be delivered to their house. They would do a spit test and then we'd get the results back in two days. That was my thought. So if you were higher risk, like if you were married to somebody who's a transit worker and you're living together because they're married, she's at higher risk or he's at higher risk being living together. 
Well, here's the problem, Jeff. And I didn't know this. Those PCR tests, they're 70% accurate, <laughs> which means seven out of the, three out of the 10 times, you're gonna get back a, a false reading. And so if 30% if, if of the time, what kind of diagnostics is yeah. that? So openly, That's I stopped trouble. doing that. That's the trouble. And then we get to the antibody testing. So I was huge into antibody testing, but here was my thought. When, when people come in and if they have COVID and they're asymptomatic, the antibody IgM would be detectable and then if, if it was detectable in the test where you just prick their finger, you're looking for IgM and IgG. Okay, so IgG means they have maybe a little bit of immunity or long-term immunity because they've had the virus, but IgM was supposed to show suspicious activity because that antibody comes out early on. Right. Okay, and, and here's my problem. The sensitivity on IgM is significantly lower than IgG, and openly, if they have the antibody, that's great. That means I'm more protected and the patient's more protected because they've already either been exposed and developed antibodies, and that's great. But again, it's all about sensitivity and specificity. Right. And with IgM, here's what happened. We were told that IgM would start to pick it up after day three or day four, and it turns out IgM starts to peak around day 12. Oh. Uh, and, and if right day 12 so i'm just thinking this is this is why pcr testing and all it's all about <clears throat> catching the virus exactly when it's most susceptible so i've heard pcr testing is most accurate in the first five days of when the patient actually has the virus then that decreases piece uh, you know igm starts to increase around day five day six and peaks at day 12 Okay, but they've already been shedding nice. the virus for five days. So I, I, I'm telling you right now, I'm really unclear. And here I was really promoting PCR and antibody testing. We'll still use antibody testing in our office as a generic way of doing this for ourselves. But openly, until I have more sensitivity and specificity, I'm, I'm, I, I'm telling you, I'm being much more cautious until better tests come out that's available. Uh, to all of us and openly Jeff I think one of the most important points is is that in our own meetings with our team you have to be screening your own team and they have to be very careful with how, with how they're acting out of the office because I think there's much less chance of me catching COVID in the office than out of the office. What are your thoughts? Yeah, no, I, I agree with that totally. And, and and it's one of the reasons, you know, we made that funny Facebook post of misting each other down on, on the way in and out and <laughs> taking temperature. And, and we have right. that obligation to, to do that with each other as, as much as with our patients. Um, but, but yeah, yeah I, I yeah. think it just, it, it has to be a universal precaution, uh, situation. And, right. and, uh, I, I was hoping to feel more confident, uh, about antibody testing after that, but, but it seems like, you know, no one really has the answer with that, huh? You know, and, and it's interesting because when I worked with Steve Kizzy, who's the president of Midway, they had, they had purchased a lot of tests and they didn't even want to sell them until we really knew how sensitive and specific these were because when they were launched to dentistry everybody said this is it this right. is so important and maybe it is important to test people to see if they've been exposed and they have the antibody but it really i still think screening and doing temperatures and oxygen saturation both for the team members and our patients i, I just think we have to do all the precautionary work to just to minimize with good screening in our practice right now. And I think until better testing comes out, I think that's really the solution in my world right yeah, now. Yeah, just, a, just a, a new norm of universal precautions, yeah. right? <laughs> I, 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 I hear yeah. you. So l l let me just ask you this. What's your departure protocol? And, I will, and this could be a, like our last good quick question. Sure. When you're leaving the office, I mean, are you, is your team taking off all the clothes underneath their scrubs, putting them in some kind of plastic bag? And are you, you know, are they washing them either at the office or at home and changing into other clothes? And then you're instructing them to shower as soon as they get home. 
How are you doing that in your so office? So th that's a great question. And I think that's the, the million dollar question for most offices. And, yep. and that's what my friends call me right. and ask as well. So I am completely yep. out of space in my office. Like literally if I had to put a washer and dryer in here, it would be right next to my desk. And as you can see, I already have two other doctors right next to my desk. So a, a, a laundry right. unit uh, isn't gonna work until we add on or, or build on. So what we're doing is that misting protocol uh, with a temperature on the way in, and on the way out, everybody mists again. Now, in any aerosol procedure, everyone will have a gown. The gown gets shed, the gown gets thrown away. Anything underneath right. that is exposed gets misted with the instructions that everybody goes home and then showers immediately as soon as they get home. Yep. Okay. Recommendations to take footwear off outside. The you know that that's something yes. else that we're looking into are these these footies right um, like they wear in the OR right. but but for now at the very least it's getting misted from the outsides and you know then leave them outside of your home once you get there. Got it. And I and I think that is pretty much going to be our protocol, the same. I, I I'm pretty much following. We have room in our kitchen at the office to do a washer dryer. So the team wanted to do that. It was either that or take out the comb beam. And I really didn't want to take out the comb no. beam, Jeff. I bet you wouldn't either. No, and, and my kitchen is also the storage room, so I would have to get rid of all my supplies. <laughs> right. Hello. Like, like we're, we're, we're any different than everybody right. else out it's there. It's the real world. Exactly. <laughs> it's the real world. Jeff, I can't thank you enough. Thanks for joining me on part two of our segment. And uh, I love you, Absolutely. brother. Absolutely. Love you too, man. You be good. You too. Bye, bro. So let me be clear. We want to hear from you. We want to hear your questions. So what we want you to do is we want you to go to education at midwaydental.com. Shoot us your questions. We'll go right to the experts. I know I'm not the expert. So let's go ask the experts what we should be doing as our next step next week, the week after, and thereafter. I look forward to hearing from you.